Okay. Hello and good evening, everybody. It's uh, the virtual conference live talks with myself, Dov Benyak of Kurtzman. I have a special guest tonight and uh, it's 8 p.m. UK time. So just before we get started with my special guest, um, we're going to just give time for people to uh, to log on, as they say, because of the, the delay in Facebook Live and in YouTube. So we're out on YouTube, we're out on Facebook Live, and we're also uh, out on the uh, one of the ACT groups, which has almost 4,000 people on it. So hopefully we'll get some people um, coming in and interacting with us uh, over the next, you know, half an hour or so. Um, so don't be shy. Once you come in, give some uh, likes and tags and shares and uh, even do a watch party. All right, so we're just kind of waiting now. We'll give it a couple of minutes. We'll see who um, is coming in. It's uh, expected that there'll be people from not just the United Kingdom, but, of course, uh, the, because of time zones, you know, we'll just see who uh, who manages to come on. So if you're coming on now, then just uh, give us a wave, give us a comment, just tell us you're here, where you're coming in from. We're going to have a wonderful uh, evening tonight. We've got a brilliant guest on. No secret because his name is Big Shining Lights behind me, but um, we'll, we'll find out who actually is Jim Lucas in a few minutes. So, yeah, we've got people kind of coming on now, which is good. good news, good news. You know, when you when you have a party and you put the invitations out, hopefully some people will come and knock the door. Not during these days, unfortunately, but hopefully we can do it virtually. So if you're coming in uh, live from wherever you're coming in, just kind of knock on the door by putting in a comment saying, hi, I'm here, and uh, where are you coming in from? That would be nice. So uh, let me just check that we're, yeah, well, that we're going out in all sorts of different uh different channels um all right so we'll give it another minute and then we're going to go uh and we'll start officially all right so we're just kind of waiting our time just to see who comes if you come in please comment please tag share watch party all these uh great ways of spreading the news and um getting people on sharing this because i have no doubt that what we're going to get tonight from Jim Lucas is going to be worth coming in here for and worth listening to and worth putting into practice. Okay. Um, I'll explain in a second why I think that. Um, but if you're coming in, I can see there's a few people coming in now. Tell us where you're coming from. Are you coming in from YouTube? Are you coming in from Facebook Live? And if you're in Facebook Live, what page are you coming in from? Because it's going out on a number of groups and pages. So just let us know. Give us a little uh, comment. Okay, so here we have somebody already commenting. So we have Thomas McGowan. Thomas McGowan, um, good evening to you, sir. Great to have you in. Um, and if you could just share, like, tag, put up these hearts and uh, all these things that, uh, that we can do just to make this lively, bring it in and um, make it uh, friendly for other people to, to join into. So great having Thomas McGowan here. Um, Thomas is also joins me uh, quite a few times on the morning show at 11 a.m. every day, Monday to Friday in the UK. So it's great to have you here. Okay, now I'm beginning to see people are coming. Hearts are beginning to go. Um, Jim's sitting in the green room. Um, unfortunately, we are not able to uh, give him the usual champagne and cheese and wine. But, um, but he's sitting there anywhere. He's waiting to come in. So um, great to have uh, great to have comments. All right. So um, I see that Thomas is on Facebook. So that's fantastic. I see there's other people joining up. So the more that come in, the more of an experience we can have together. And and don't forget that we want to have comments. We want to have an interaction with um, my special guest tonight, and not just it's not just a lecture. Okay. So just you know, let's make it interactive. Tom. Thomas, let's get it going. Let's get people going in here and have some good comments coming, some good questions coming, and uh, building up the atmosphere. Okay, so that's what we want to have. This is not about 
a lecture, this is not a university lecture or anything, or a podcast or a vlogcast or any of these kind of things. This is about being in the room with Jim Lucas and getting some skills from him, getting some experiential stuff coming through. And I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to have a really nice night. No pressure to Jim, though, sitting in the green room, though. Um, we'll get to see him in a few minutes. So, all right. So we're going to give it, let's say, another 30 seconds, and then we're going to move right in so that we're not holding people back that have made the effort to come in, and then we'll see who joins us on the way. So giving it another uh, 20 seconds, and we're in 20 seconds, just about the time that takes to wash your hands properly and sing happy birthday twice as we're told so um counting down now from uh, basically from 10 seconds and we'll be in so good evening everybody and welcome to the virtual conference live talks with myself dov ben yakov kurtzman we have a special guest um, those who were with us earlier saw Richard Bennett, and I explained there how Richard Bennett was one of three people who were my first um, my first teachers in acceptance and commitment therapy, and I have great respect uh, for my teachers. This is another one of them, one of the, the number two of the three, Jim Lucas, who I met um, all these years ago. We couldn't work it out six, seven, eight years ago. Um, in the first uh, Act Week in Birmingham University. So um, it's great to have one of my greatest mentors, my first teachers here with me tonight in this series of live talks that I'm doing with um, the greatest therapists, researchers, authors, um, psychologists from around the world. We've had people uh, like Ben Sedley from New Zealand. We've had Amy Murrell from down south in the United States. We've got Richard Bennett um, from the UK. We've had uh, uh, Jim Lucas coming in now from the UK. We've had Tom Tsubu from the United States. And we've got a whole list um, that's going to come after um, the holiday break. Some of us are uh, going to be celebrating some sort of holidays, and if not celebrating holidays, one is back whole weekend here in the UK. So that's very significant. We're going to have a break. We're going to come back around about the 20th of uh, April with a whole list, including um, Kelly Wilson and, and a whole bunch of other um, great guests that we're going to have. All right. So without further ado, this is not about me. It's not about uh, anyone else apart from you and uh, Jim, who's made the effort to come in to um, to speak to us tonight and to see um, what, what he can offer to make our lives a little bit more manageable during this time. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to Jim Lucas. Hi, good evening, Jim. Hello, Dolph. Hello. Nice to see you. How are you? Wonderful. I'm so happy, as uh, I explained before, ha to have you here. We haven't met since in person, that is, since um, our conference in Spain just under three years ago now. Um, but as I explained, we first met, you know, more or less about seven years ago, I think six, seven years ago. So we've, we've been in touch kind of virtually. We've met each other now and then, and it's really great to have you. Unfortunately, under the circumstances that we're, it, we're in, but that's the way of the world at the moment. And we've got people tuning in. We've got people coming in and... Uh, you know, I'd like to I'd like to bring you in also as somebody who's important to me, and I believe has something to offer the people watching. So, without further ado, I, I don't introduce my guests. I give them the chance to to do that themselves, and then we'll we'll move into it. It's very informal. We'll see you know how experiential uh, we'll get. Just before you start, though, I just want to say that Thomas McGowan has said he shared this into different various of groups. So we're, we're going to get people coming on. He loves the morning sessions. And he know, yeah, he hasn't been this week, but that's okay. Nothing is, there's no obligations to anything here. Um, so back into Jim. Jim, over to you. Well, thank you, Dov. And uh, I'm honored to see your, receive your invitation to be part of this, um, this project and this service that you're offering to people. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I'll introduce myself a little. Um, so I live and work in Birmingham in the UK. Um, I'm a father to two small children um, and, 
a husband and I in my work I do a few different things so I run with as uh, in the area of cognitive behavioral therapies and in particular acceptance and commitment therapy and I also at the University of Birmingham um, who are undertaking their cognitive behavioral therapy um, diploma uh, to health service um, increasing access to logical therapies program um, and um, also kind of app training around different locations and also part of Birmingham Map Week which um, hopefully this year will be our seventh year so I think it was probably 2013 or 14 we first met Dov. Um, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so that so that's wonderful. And just uh, to explain to everyone watching and yourself, I don't know what it is from your side. We're experiencing a little bit of uh, bandwidth, uh, weak bandwidth problems. So, um, not to worry. We'll just carry on, and we'll see what we can, uh, what how, you know, how well we get on. Um, just to let you know from your side, if there's any way of um, improving that, then just um, just to let let you know, Jim. All right. So um, ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, as as I said before, big welcome to you. And and you know, living at home with your with your children, as you said, you've got two young children at home. Um, during this time. I think there's a lot of people watching that have young children at home. And, you know, just, just you know, what is it, what's it like for you to be at home now with these children? I don't know if they have any understanding or what's going on, but there's no doubt in my mind that they'll be picking up some some kind of vibes or some feelings of, uh, of what's going on in the world at the moment. Children, um, you know, have this instinctual, sponge-like way of knowing what's going on, even if they don't fully understand it. So what's the situation? How, how, how's your family coping with this? I think it's uh, it's got different moments to it, really. Um, sometimes it's it, it, it's great. You know, we're, we're in new territory where we're spending much more time together. They're not at school, obviously. I'm not going out to work. Um, and you know, some of those things are kind of amazing uh, to get to, to spend that much time with each other. And then, of course, there are other moments where it's a lot harder. Um, you know, they miss their friends. And we try to do some online stuff, and it's not the same. Um, and so there's there are moments where that becomes frustrating, where it becomes sad. Um, and we're also just kind of bored a lot of the time as well so that's part of their struggle that they're sort of having to kind of navigate about it as well um you know my wife's a key worker so right. um she's so this easy. week yeah no um and uh, um you know doesn't have to go and work in the hospitals and of course that's amazing work that people are doing uh, but she working in mental uh, She's going out and and, uh, and there's a post to uh, and then me, you know, I run my own practice, so in my own business. So there's the anxiety: of, will that survive? Kind of what what we're going through at the moment, as we as we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation and what will happen at the end of it. So we're each on our own and together, kind of navigating this particular kind of context just as so many other families out there also are also doing that right and and are your children how would you say your children are reacting are they aware of something different going on or are they in you know in bliss and managing to get through this <laughs> no they're certainly not in bliss i mean they're six and eight um so they have an awareness you know at a you know conceptual level of this but also they're living kind of the consequences of it. Like I say, not getting to see their friends, not getting right. that freedom movement so much. 
and and just for people watching that might have you know young kids like yourself and you know any any kind of tips or skills that they could i'm talking about the parents here could bring into their daily uh schedule in order to if if things are getting a little bit kind of pressurized for them you might have work just like you say or or one of their the partners might be out you know as a key worker something similar to yourself where things might be um it might be one of the partners are not used to even dealing with the kids normally and you know they are now at home and the other ones outside is there something that you could offer them at you know at this time yeah i mean i'll tell you what's kind of working for us you know at least some of the time and that's kind of i guess kind of a combination of three things and that's setting up some structure to the day so uh, we can all kind of get some of what it is that we need for ourselves you know my children kind of need a mixture of fun relaxation learning time with us so structuring the day that they can do that and then structuring the day where i get to do the range of things that i need to do as well because we're all in a space where the different roles that we have are now colliding they're no longer happening in separate spaces so that structure is something that i think is kind of really necessary to each of our well-being and within that also i think kind of self-care is important is mm. that we might have tendencies as we're more stressed and anxious here i know that i do to kind of flip between either being really busy and trying to overachieve or feeling like I just want to kind of give in and give up and not really kind of do much at all. Um, right. And the risk then is that my routines kind of just disappear and then I stop being able to kind of look after myself. So trying to navigate that balance between those two things I think is useful. And then the third thing I think is trying to stick together as a family because we and so many other families are spending so much more time together those little things that kind of irritate us about each other are going to be much bigger and much more amplified and so it's like well what can we do then what can i do as i tend to kind of get stuck in those moments or react in ways that take it that that make it worse rather than better as well so i guess i'm saying structure self-care and trying to stick together as a family so yeah so that structure i i, I think i also agree with you that it's really important um you know the the we got we got some uh advice that i came across a lot a few days ago from one of the astronauts in the space station i mean how you know confined can you be if you're in the space station and i think those who went up in september are not I don't know when they were planned to come back down, but I don't think they want to come back down at this particular point. So I think they're kind of stuck up there for a while. Um, and uh, and one of the things that they mentioned was also uh, structure, having some sort of structure uh, in their life. So I think that's really relevant. I've got a friend of mine who's a, a, a expert in negotiations and also for help preparing soldiers to be prisoners of war and one of the things that he speaks about also is if you know if you're captured and so a lot of the time you can be put into solitary confinement and things like that and all sorts of nasties but one of the things if you want is to keep some sort of structure to your day to your week keep some sort of orientation so that you don't become even institutionalized in a way because everything's the same isn't it was the same four walls it's the same you, you know even the kids get their structure from well they know they go to school so it must be a school day they know they're off so it must be an off day you know maybe they do this at school or that at school so there's a certain structure to their life according to what their context is but here we're all in the same context every single day and at one point we might not even know the difference between day and night you know the lights are on the lights are off we're not quite sure people getting up later going to bed later etc so i so I, I i mean i love that idea and the keeping of the of the family together um just to keep bringing in people that are coming in because uh it's important that, that one of this is to, to bring in people's comments and questions so um thomas just says it keeps fading in and out and it has been but actually i'm seeing that it's kind of corrected itself at the moment so so that's a good 
So that's a good thing. So um, Adam's come up with uh, how do you get your children to manage emotionally? So, okay, so you said that they're actually missing their friends and, and uh, you know, as such. So that's going to, you know, that that's obviously that it's affecting them in an emotional way. It's not just a structural way. It's not just a, a scheduled thing. How do you, uh, you know, as for the, somebody of your experience and, and wisdom and education, even though this is new for you as well as it is for all of us, but how do you manage that emotional side of your children? Mm. Well, there's a tendency for, for them and for me as things get harder for us to do what pretty much kind of every human being does, and that's to kind of get busy in our own minds thinking about things. And the more we get lost in thought about stuff, the further away we can tend to get from noticing what it is that our emotions are, noticing what our experiences are. And like we can hold that, those three things, that structure, that self-care and that sticking together, we can hold those things too tightly. And so I might, even though I'm trying to not overachieve, I might try to overachieve in, in those three things too. And when I'm doing that, again, that's gonna make me more busy in my mind and less aware of just what I might be feeling here and now in this moment. And it's the same for my children. And so what can be good for me and what can be good for them is to slow it down enough at different times to be curious about what they might be feeling about something, to ask, what does it feel like not being able to see your friends? And to make room for the sadness, for the frustration, for the tears, for for the kind of tantrums, I guess, kind of sometimes as well. Mm. Yeah. And I think what that does is it can release a lot of tension when people were able to sort of slow down and notice what they're feeling. Um, I noticed that in my own experience too. Right. And then what it helps me do is it helps me to just acknowledge the feelings that I'm having. And I see how useful it is for them too, because although they might be really distressed and upset about, you know, what they can't do, when they're able to just express what they're feeling and have me hear it, and have me hear it in a way where I'm not trying to fix it too, but just kind of, mm. yeah, yeah, I would feel that too. It provides a soothing, just kind of in those kind of very moments Nothing really much has to be done, um, but it provides that soothing that I think can help emotionally. I think one, uh, you know, uh, amazing, and I think one of the things that stands out for me and what you said there was, you know, not trying to fix it. I mean, what what bigger urge does a parent have than trying to fix everything for their kids, you know, especially painful stuff, you know? They just feel the pain of the children and they have this urge to fix stuff, um, including emotional stuff. Eh? We, 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 all right, we'll, we'll find a way of making it better. And, and what I'm hearing from you is it might be more useful to us if we don't rush to fix it. Maybe we can't fix it. Um, and first of all, to acknowledge that in ourselves, that not this might not be fixable, but by just joining with them and being with them and them knowing that we are with them um, and being with that sadness and, and teaching them almost how to be with that sadness. I think that's something that's missing a lot in our society is our parents or our teachers teaching us how to be with our emotions, how just to be with our sadness, the difficult emotions especially. Um, and just sit with them sometimes, as you said, slow it down and and feel it. And I think that's a wonderful lesson. Not easy, not easy, but a wonderful lesson for a parent to a lesson for the rest of their lives they'll be teaching their children. But but there's that battle that's going to be going inside 
a parent, isn't there, of, okay, I can sit down with the pain of my child while they're crying and then serious pain. And then the other side, you know, I'm dying to get them an ice cream and say, oh, don't worry, everything will be all right. And let's go play a game and stop crying and everything will be hunky-dory. I mean, there's that conflict, isn't there? Absolutely. And I still, I don't want to give the impression that by doing this, this will mean that you don't have those kind of those difficult moments. And I don't want to give the impression that me saying this here and now doesn't mean that earlier we weren't, you know, having some of our worst <laughs> moments either. Because yeah. you know, we we were and we will tomorrow too. Yeah. But it's a tool. It's a tool I can pick up and try to pick up again today if I need to. Try to pick up again tomorrow. And so what's really key here is trying to build those tiny habits of things that make a better difference rather than picking up the things that we might kind of intuitively do or do in a reactive way that make it worse. And that's a challenge, that's an ongoing challenge, but but one one I think we're capable of. Yeah, it's, it's as you said, I think that's so true too. It's it's not something that's like, you know, you do it once and that's it, right? Isn't it? It's it's an ongoing thing that's, you know, possibly never ending because you're, you know, if we're just talking about parents and children, you're still going to be parents of the children when they're older. And, you know, if it's just between you and yourself or you and the rest of your friends and family or whoever you're surrounded by, these things are ongoing, aren't they? So it's a, it's a, it's something that we need to practice i suppose isn't it just like you said you practice with it you pick it up you try it falls out your hand you try it again it might work it might not work this time you know it's not something that's like a magic bullet right and i and it's it's a mythical concept isn't it the magical bullet you know that's why it's called what it is and so we may fantasize about those things and yet something is something is is kind of different something's harder isn't it you know and the problem of the problem of slowing down and giving space to our own emotions as well as being curious in a way where we're trying to empathize rather than rescue our children's uh, distress is is a problem of our evolution problem of culture you know our minds have evolved in a way where they're often trying to work stuff out work out what needs to be done to kind of fix this and make it better. And so we, we bring that history into our day-to-day -day experience. And then we've got this other thing kind of coming down on us, which is our culture telling us things like um, uh, experiencing, giving room for emotions and sadness is feeling sorry for yourself, or it's, it's, it's a sign of weakness or it's being soft or it's better to be practical and get on with it. You know, that's what people did in the war. They kind of got on with it. Yeah. And here we are in kind of our own version of a war. Um, and maybe, maybe there's the potential for some of those messages to be uh, expressed at, at this point in time. Yeah, so we've covered kind of having some sort of structure you know, just to, you know, help us coordinate and orientate, I suppose, ourselves. And and then we're talking about slowing things down. And that that's applicable, I think, for ourselves, just as well as being parents to children. Um, so slowing our, our down and, and being with the pain and the sadness and goodness knows what else everybody's experiencing because we're getting it from all, all sides now, aren't we? So we're getting this health kind of, I know I have anyway. This health anxiety. Um, there's no, it's no secret. I'm Jewish, and I think part of being Jewish is having health anxiety. Um, it's a built-in genetic thing. It actually is actually because when I was studying for my, <laughs> it's a funny thing. But when I was studying for my masters at Cardiff University, my masters in psychiatry, and there's a big book about this thick about all the different pathologies, and and at one point it talks about those who suffer the most from 
things like health anxiety. And one of them was medical students because they're learning about it all the time. And you, you begin to experience everything that you're learning, right? So when I was learning also, every symptom that I was learning about, I was actually experiencing it was quite horrific. But another another uh, population, were, it says it in the book, was Jewish people. So they, they have serious um, health anxiety. And if my mother's got anything as an example, then absolutely true. But so dealing with our own anxieties, whatever it is in health, and then we've got the economical side for a lot of us now, extraordinary amount of us worrying about our jobs, our, our businesses, like you just said when you when, when you opened up. Um, and then we have also the econo economical, you know, not just the personal business or jobs, the whole society's economical um, fears and threats that we're going through, as well as, um, you know, not just emotional and being cooped up in these kind of submarines that we're in now, our houses have become... I don't want to use the word jail, but it's certainly become a place where we're imprisoned in at the moment. And in some countries, they're imprisoned so much that they're not are even allowed out the front door. So, um, and I was just reading earlier that some people in Spain just now are at a stage where if you need to walk the dog, you've got to let it out on its own almost. And if you have to have to, if you live in a block of flats and you need to take it out because you can't just let it out in the garden, then you've got 50 meters and that's your lot. You know, you get the dog done and then you're back at home. So it's really constricted. People talking about the loss of our civil liberties, which to us in the Western world is something that's holier than thou. I mean, this is this is how we live. We live with physical and, and, and freedom. We can walk around, we can do what we want. And, and that's all been taken away from us just now. So there's an, a massive amount of um, change that we're living through at the moment. This um, is our common context, isn't it? This is what we're all going through together at the same time. And, and in some ways that's, I think, kind of useful. Um, but I just sort of interrupted you there, Dov. And yeah, sure. Sorry, if you're about to go and say on something. But I think it's also important to notice that, like you were also saying in there, is that our contexts always are variable within this common context as well. Like I've described kind of my situation, which might not be the same as your situation. And it might not be something the same as the situations that the people are what, uh, who are watching now, um, because some people aren't able to be with the people that they care about. Um, they, they, they don't know when they're gonna get to see them again. Yeah. Other people are in homes where they weren't getting on that well before, and now they're not getting on. Uh, well, it's it's worse now than it was before. Yeah, it's and, kind of a pressure. One, right, yeah, and one of the frightening things is that we're going to see kind of uh, we're going to see domestic abuse going to go up at, yeah. at this point in time, and so people's contexts are different, as well as we're in the same boat, the same thing. And so I think, yeah, there's this common challenge. One of the things that I'm finding useful in terms of my focus at the moment is to ask myself, what's my biggest challenge within this bigger context? Because the way that I'm reacting to it, again, won't be the same way that you're reacting to it. This is why I'm drawn to, you know, acceptance and commitment therapy and contextual behavioral science is that it's, we're paying attention to context so closely there's not one thing that's going to work for everybody or a manual that's kind of going to work for everybody to help them deal more effectively with the struggles they're having we need to look at what's happening in your world both in here but also kind of out there and when we can put those things together we can ask that question and get different answers what's my biggest challenge in this context at the moment and for me, one of my biggest challenges is staying connected, staying connected with me and the range of things that I need and am feeling, staying connected with my family members and the range of things that they need and feel. So it comes around again to what I was saying, I think slowing it down, um, just practicing kind of grounding yourself in your body, coming down out of the head and pausing for various moments throughout the day where I just, I'm gonna give myself permission to just pause, close my eyes and breathe. Can we do that with you now? 
Yeah, let's 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 do that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's plant our feet into the ground, both of them noticing that there's an area of your feet that come into contact with the floor. And just taking a slow breath in, breathing in for a few seconds. And then gently breathing out slowly. Extending that out breath to be longer than the in breath. Pause for a moment. Then take another slow breath in. Pause again and gently extending that out breath out. Engaging your body soothing system when we do that. Now let's be curious about some of the other senses. Notice some sounds that you can hear happening around you at the moment. Notice those louder, more obvious sounds, as well as those quieter, more subtle sounds. Now, as I do this, I notice my mind beginning to wander onto other things, and maybe you are too, because mm. this is what our minds like to do. And that's okay. It doesn't mean that we're failing at it. And notice where your mind goes to. And then just like you're welcoming a small child or an animal back towards you, gently welcome your attention back to something happening in this here and now moment, something you can experience through your senses, whether it be sounds, whether it be something you can see in the room in front of you. And as we do this, continue to just gently breathe in. And out. And ask myself, ask yourself curiously, what's my biggest challenge today? And what's one tool that I can pick up that might help me navigate that challenge? Okay, let's leave it there then, Dov. Thank you everyone for coming along with that. Can I just get a sense from you, Dov? What was it like to just be guided through that? Yeah, so, well, first of all, your voice is great for this. So, um, but yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a person that's moving, always moving and moving and moving, and, and that slowing down really talks to me. You know that mm. that idea of it. And so when we just did that, that was the thing that that really got me is the fact that it, I I'm slowing down when I was doing that. Right. So everything was much more. It's like almost slow motion, things were a bit clearer, the sounds were a bit clearer, the breathing helped, but most of all, my kind of whole experience was that of just doing it a little slower, you know? And the whole world seems to slow down when I did it. You know, it's not, you know the whole thing, and it, and it, and it does, it does, I mean, today's been an extremely emotional day for me. You know, I've been crying on and off all day for all sorts of reasons. But, um, but so that just slowing down has been so beautiful for me, just to be now here and be with you and be with whoever else is joining us. But just that slowing down has been a, a it's a, it's a, an experience of just. I don't know, maybe it's, I don't want to call it safe because I'm not sure if that's really true or that's just a kind of a bird's word that I'm using, but it certainly feels, you know, like comforting, mm. really comforting. I think that's the word. I think, I think as well as having this mind that is evolved in us, that's, that's always trying to work stuff out and how that can work against us, we also have evolved 
certain things that really kind of make positive differences as well. Like we know how to be patient with ourselves and other people. We know how to be kind. We know how to forgive and to be compassionate. But our minds trip us up and it gets in and get in the way. And our minds are just reacting to kind of what we're picking up kind of happening around us as well. And so this this simple tool, I really like it. And I see it make a difference in so many other people when I teach them it. And when they're able to practice it on a regular basis too, is that it can be it can be one small thing that that can open up so much that so many things that that that, that make your life and the people that you love their lives better too. Yeah. So just kind of to go over it, and then you know, I promise you that this wouldn't take a long time. I'm, I always keep going over because it's just so addictive listening to you guys <laughs> and learning from you. But I've got to stick true to my promises. But um, so yeah, so so that you know that slowing down has been really, really prominent in what you've been saying. Also, that structure, which is really, which is really good, and that sense of just sitting with your emotions as well. And I think that slowing down allow, obviously allows you to do that much more efficiently and much much more, you know, a higher quality, just sitting there, understanding a little bit of what's going on, feeling what's going on, being with the others that are with you. Knowing though, knowing though at the same time that there can be times when it gets pretty rough and it's to be expected. And, um, you know, you mentioned also the possibilities of even people in domestic violence situations and Tom Tsuba went on about the lessons from the Ebola time in Africa where um, you know adverse childhood experiences went up so there was there's that to be aware of that let's slow things down a bit let's not let's go along down that road if it's not possible um, because the ground is getting ripe for that kind of thing the longer we're in this situation. So I think being aware of it is important just to slow the things down a bit and think a little bit, and be with yourself before you choose a behavior that might not be useful for everybody in the room at the one time. I think I also have to take that on board, even though I'm here on my own, which has got its advantages and disadvantages. Um, but, uh, yeah, certainly people that have got more than, and it might not just be your children, it might be your parents or it might be your spouse or whatever, just not used to being together so, you know, for such an intense time. Um, so on that note, we have, uh, we're, we're finishing off these series, you know, let's call it the end of our first semester. We're going to have a break and then we're going to be coming back again after the, uh, after our break about the 20th of April. In the meantime, Jim Lucas, thank you very much uh, for joining me. It was, as expected, wonderful and helpful and useful. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you to you, Dov, and thank you to everyone else who, who came along and uh, spent the last kind of 40 minutes with us. So thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Take care and be healthy. Good night.